America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Just for the record, members present are um, my Vice Chair, Onida Aquino, uh, Councillor Estela Reyes, Councillor Mark LaPlante, and Council President Modesto Maldonado. Um, Councillors, we're going to get started with, um, since today's a regular uh, Budget and Finance Subcommittee meeting, we're going to get started with some items that we have on the agenda, get them done, and then we're going to uh, continue with uh, our first budget hearing. Um, I know that we have here uh, Mr. Anello. Let's start with document 190-14, which is an appropriation transfer for fiscal year 2015, uh, transfer from free cash uh, reserves to DPW Snow and Ice uh, Division for $1.6 million. Mr. Anello. Yeah, this is a transfer we make annually for the uh, Snow and Ice. Uh, obviously, this year's Snow and Ice account was uh, substantially um, uh, depleted uh, with the such uh, with the the winter that we had and uh, so we're looking to transfer 1.6 million from free cash to snow and ice uh, dpw snow and ice division thank you i know that this is um every year we only uh, budget one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and this is one of those accounts that we're actually able to go beyond um, right and that's uh, i think are there any questions counselor in this particular issue no? Councilors, can I please get a motion to uh, send up to the full council with a favorable recommendation and order a public hearing? So moved. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Uh, document 191-14, appropriation transfer. Uh, it's a transfer from free cash reserves to employee benefits uh, pension assessment in the amount of $290,000. Uh, Mr. Arnello. And this is a transfer from uh, for the pension assessment uh, for FY14. There was an additional pension assessment of FY14 for 290,000. Uh, after we prepared the, presented the budget last year, uh, I'm not sure if the council recalls, but last year we had a, a change in how we calculated our pension, and we got the retirement board to give us a credit for any grant payments made in the previous fiscal year, um, and. Uh, the estimated grant payments versus the actual grant payments came in different than what was anticipated. So the uh, retirement board uh, uh, sent us another assessment of 290,000. Uh, so we'd like to take that out of free cash to pay that uh, obligation out of this year. Okay, councilors, are there any questions? Councilors, what's our motion? Um, motion to send that up with a favorable recommendation. To order a public hearing? To order a public hearing. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, document 192-14 is an appropriation transfer, uh, transfer from free cash reserves to Chapter 58 Capital Reserve Fund on the amount of $979,855. Uh, Mr. Anello. Uh, this transfer is the uh, required uh, transfer for under Chapter 58 uh, of the Mass General Laws, our, our legislation. Uh, um, uh, in 2010, we have to set aside one and a half percent of our um, prior year property taxes committed in a, in a capital reserve fund um, to uh, to use for projects lasting 10 years or more. We've uh, that I think I provided that calculation to you in a memo. That calculation, uh, our prior year taxes committed were 57.4 million times one and a half percent gives us an 861,000 reserve. We've increased that a little bit uh, more uh, to, uh, to 979,885 to exceed the one and a half percent. And that is uh, uh, our, our, our request to transfer from uh, free cash to the capital reserve fund uh, to satisfy chapter 58. Um, and then you'll see in my next, uh, in the next uh, item, uh, we're gonna transfer that to the school department. Okay. Um, Councilor, so any questions? Councilor LaPlante. All right, so this is tie in with what other document? Uh, the next uh, document on your. Um, airport? Uh, no, it's not the airport. Um, you should have. Bellevue? No, there should be. Uh, maybe it's. Uh, I got. There were. Uh, it was sent down with one, two, three. There's a fourth item. 
I think maybe you're missing it off your agenda. Um, yeah, we only have because they looked like they were the same. So I think I think I think the clerk didn't put the uh, fourth item on there. I want to just read the pull out my count the original council agenda because I think it was on there. Do you get a document number for that fourth uh, item or no? It was in my letter to the clerk, and I'm looking at 190, 191, and 192. You're missing. There should be a 193, 14. It is here. Um, and I, because there's an order. There's a. There's four orders that were submitted. One, Both no, of them say 979, 885, and you might have thought it was a duplicate. Because it's not the, the Bellevue Cemetery. It's. That's not the one that I you're. Th I think that I think the city clerk didn't put it on the agenda. Okay. <clears throat> it was included in the packet sent down to the clerk with four items. But two of them are exactly the same dollar amount, so I think he thought it was a duplicate and didn't put it on. All right, so I see, I see the, uh, I see, yeah. Yeah. the document where you go from 979 for free cash to the capital 58, chapter 58 capital reserve fund. Right. And then I see the capital reserve fund to the school capital projects fund for net school spending eligible projects. Yes, that's, that's the fourth for. item. It's not on the official council agenda. Okay, so are we going to be, are we debating that this evening? Um, since both documents seems to correlate, I think that we should probably. A and uh, B. I would do, do A and a, B. Uh, 192A and 192B. And Maria, so can I please get a motion to uh, make two documents out of 192? So moved. Second. Motion has been made on second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Mary, 192A is the one that is on the agenda. 192B is uh, transfer from Chapter 50A, Capital Reserve Fund, to School Capital Projects Fund. And it's on the same amount. So this is exactly the same transfer we did last year. I think we were able to transfer a little bit more. Uh, we transferred 1.6 million out of free cash to the school department in FY14. Uh, because of the snow and ice deficit uh, this year, we, we reduced it down to just a little under a million. Mr. Arnello, in, oh, Councilor LaPlante has the floor. I was gonna ask a question regarding just the expenditure of the money for the school capital projects fund. If I understand, if I heard you correctly, you said that we could spend that money for capital pr improvement projects that last longer than 10 years. That have a uh, useful life of 10 years or longer in accordance to chapter 44 of the general laws. And But it has to be school related or can it be anything municipal? Well, we're, we're providing it to the school because uh, to meet our net school spending obligation, this will help us meet that. And we're taking money out of free cash and providing it to the school, which will get us to uh, meet our, our net school spending obligation. Do we have an aggregate aggregate every year? Is this, is this accumulating? There, there's or a, the total amount to the school, I don't have my net school spending, but it's about seven point something million as our net school spending obligation to the school system. Seven million or eight million. No, but my question, I'm sorry, let me rephrase it. So we are, we are gonna be eventually here be putting in almost a million dollars into projects that are school related, school improvement related, Yep. right? And so my question is, in that in that line item, in that dedicated account, what after we put this money in, what will that will there be a new figure, or will it be that will be the figure nine seventy nine? That will be the figure that goes into the account, and the school department will draw upon that for net school spending eligible projects. So when we did this last year, they spent that down already. They they have a small amount left, but it's pretty much all gone. Okay. And, and just so I have a flavor, what kind of things are, do you know what they're spending it on? What Generally, kind it's of been roofs and boilers. Uh, all the, all the, um, the amount, uh, everything spent out of this fund is because the city's in charge of all the school buildings. They have to go through John Asenzi, who's in charge of all the facilities to approve any, uh, any of the improvements that they're working on. So they make sure they take care of the ones that are in most need. And it's a question maybe a little beyond you because it's a school-related question or DPW. What are the conditions right now of our roofs and boilers about our school system? <coughs> when are we going to get past have, that I mean, phase? You know, they've done quite a f obviously they've done quite a few repairs to roofs and uh, done quite a few repairs to boilers, but uh, 
there has been such a need uh, here in Lawrence for a number of years, not properly maintaining our, not having staff to properly maintain our boilers. Our roofs, of course, you know, we have uh, uh, so many school buildings, uh, it's almost impossible to keep up with it, but um, uh, they did make uh, uh, most of the money last year. My understanding, uh, talking to John Asenzi and Chris Molino on the school side, they work hand in hand. Uh, they did quite a bit of roof, uh, major roof repairs and did quite a few, uh, they might have even replaced a few boilers, but they did a lot of condensers and a lot of uh, equipment uh, for HVAC slash boiler systems. Hmm. All right, thank you. Um, Councilor, does have any additional questions? No. Um, Ms. Anello, you provided us with a, um, the schedule of free cash. Yes. Um, but this new document that we created, 192B, does not, it's not reflected there. Uh, I know that the amount should have been there twice. Is that correct? Uh, no, because um, we're only taking out a free cash once. Um, th there is, I do have an updated free cash, if you don't mind me handing it out to you, because oh. we changed that 26,000 for the law department to 24,000. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, the schedule in front of you had the 26,000, so I'd yeah. like to give yeah, you a new one a with copy the 24. Of <coughs> so we can toss this. Thank you, Mr. Okay, so this one's not good. We can toss this one. Yes. As, as Councilor Vasquez knows, there was a there was a math error in the city attorney's. Uh, totaling of the uh, legal bills that was approved last night from 26 down to 24,000. So uh, I adjusted the free cash schedule accordingly. But this free cash schedule, um, the 979,885 is being taken out of free cash and transferred to the capital projects fund. And, it, and this is the, just the balance of the free cash account. So we didn't take it out, it only comes out once. <coughs> okay, I, I understand that. Yep. Yeah, so it's on, we're only taking it out once. Right. Because the, trans the, the first transfer is from free cash to Chapter 58, and then Chapter 58 to the school capital projects fund. Right, to a separate. Uh, so even though it seems like we're making two different transfers, it's the same amount that we're transferring twice. Sorry, we, first we have to take it out of free cash, put it in a capital reserve fund, then we need to make an appropriation, again, according to Chapter 58. Mm -hmm. We have to take an appropriation out of uh, council approval to take it out of Chapter 58 capital reserve and put it to wherever we want it to go. Okay. Has to be in a separate vote. That's why they're okay. the same amounts and uh, the same vote. Okay. I know it's a little confusing, but I'm, I'm just trying to follow the uh, statute, so. No, I, after your explanation, it makes um, perfect sense. Uh, thank you for that. Councilor, are there any additional questions? I have a question. Uh, Mr. President. Onello, what is the current value of the uh, capital reserve fund? Uh, th with, was, with this addition of the 979? You know, there's a, sm a small bit. That last year, there was 1.6 million in that school department capital project fund. And I believe it's less than 100,000 is than left. Wow. Okay. Oh, a, uh, Bob knows. It's a $3,000 balance. He asked that question uh, recently. But I know the 1.6 million we've been asking how it's been going and it, they've been using it. They used quite a bit of it over the summer, uh, last summer and then uh, kept going. Uh, so it's pretty much depleted by now. Now this was for capital improvement of which school? Which school? Again, last year it was 1.6 million um, in FY14 and this year we're doing just a little bit under a million because we had such a large uh, a snow uh, deficit to make up. So we reduced that number a bit. Um, but this, this uh, we are dedicating it to the schools again. Uh, again, they own most of the buildings that needs the most work. We need to get those uh, buildings uh, in, in, <coughs> in order. Um, a couple of years back, I believe that um, we were informed that there were some lawsuits against the, um, the people who built the high school and also the uh, school that, we, that got the... Uh, Gilmet. The Gilmet. Yes, the Gilmet. Uh, is there any report on what is the status of that? Uh, uh, have we got any money out, out of those uh, lawsuits? Uh, not yet, but uh, there both uh, both of those uh, schools had issues with the contractor. One of them, uh, the contractor, uh, I think went uh, you know, bankrupt before the school. I think it was the high school before the high school was finished, so they had to bring in somebody else. So there's some 
uh, there's some damages that we incurred and that's what we're suing for. So there's a, a high, sc high school uh, lawsuit that, uh, or la lawsuit, um, high school uh, uh, work being done now. Um, and then also the Gamet, there was another issue with uh, the, the mold in the building. So there's some, uh, some insurance and bonding companies uh, fighting back and forth. So those, those both of those uh, cases are ongoing. <coughs> yeah, one, one quick question, which is like, with the new schedule of free cash, after if and when all of these get approved by the full city council, you have two point five million dollars, roughly. Uh, what are you expecting? How much further of a draining of the free cash do you expect for remainder of the fiscal year? I'm, I'm hoping zero. Uh, the last thing that we do at this time of year, as the council may, councilors may recall, is we have to, uh, before the end of the year, we have to look at everybody's uh, budgets and see if there are any, uh, we make internal transfers. Um, um, no department head has made me aware of any deficits in their accounts that, uh, uh, that we haven't been able to, to manage within the departmental account, so, except for the snow and ice deficit. Uh, so I'm hoping there aren't any other surprises, but uh, so far I haven't heard from anyone. So I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape. Hopefully we will not touch that free cash uh, before the end of the fiscal year. So is there currently a, a spending freeze in the city? Uh, th there is a, the mayor's uh, imposed a spending freeze. Uh, we've did that the last few years. Just toward the end of the year, we, uh, we try and uh, discourage departments from spending uh, everything in, that's left in their budget before the end of the year uh, so we can because uh, appropriation turnbacks are one of our sources of free cash. If we don't spend everything we have, we can save it for a future rainy day. And um, so unless people really need something, the mayor has been, uh, been pretty frugal about approving uh, new purchases uh, with the last uh, six weeks to go in the fiscal year. So what's the lesson here if you're a department head? Spend it early? Uh, no, no the lesson is don't spend it unless you really need it. But at the end of the year, and now that we're at the very end of the year, we would like to... Uh, uh, discourage uh, non-essential spending at this point. So we are still spending money. There are still checks being cut. It's just not uh, uh, each, uh, the department has to explain uh, the reason for the purchase. Uh, do they need it now or can they wait? Wait till what? The new, oh, wait till the, the new the fiscal, fiscal year. year. Right. So you're gonna be able to turn back some money and, and amp up the free cash. It certainly helps, uh, or, or uh, uh, and it'll certainly help with the year-end transfers between departments. That if there are already deficits, we'll be able to take care of them without coming back to free cash. And I'm sorry, Council uh, Chair. So, uh, besides just having more money, and including and having a free cash, not a bonanza, but a tidy sum at the end of the fiscal year. What are the benefits? Is that does that does that help with the bond rate uh, agencies and, and Wall Street? I mean, wh where does that? Well, free, free, free cash does, uh, you know, uh, the ratings agencies are very interested in how we manage our budget. And uh, managing our budget means not spending, uh, you know, not spending more than we budgeted and certainly not spending all that we budgeted is a good uh, management indicator. Uh, also with the revenues exceeding their, our estimates. But free cash is, uh, and, and reserves, if you will, uh, same as a company that has ex excess earnings at the end of the year goes into an account called retained earnings. Ours is just called free cash, uh, but it's a, a reservation of of, uh, of, uh, of funds that are within the company that we're, we're trying to set aside for a future day. So that is a the fund balance in, in our case here in a municipality is, is something that the ratings agencies look at very closely, undesignated and unreserved fund balance. And later tonight, I think maybe tonight, we're gonna be talking about debt management. Will that be on schedule for this evening? That is. Okay, so when we do talk about debt management, I guess I'm curious to see if there's a difference between having a free cash of 2.5 million versus $3 million or $4 million. I know, put yourself in the shoes of a, a, a Wall Street bond rating agency. Um, for it to, to improve a tick, what would they, traditionally, what would they look for to say, yeah, this is a much safer place for municipal investments and we're going to increase your bond rating? Well, in the in a ratings from a ratings reports that Moody's and S and P issues, if you read the report, it's in the report. It'll indicate what'll move the rating up, what'll move the rating down, uh, and some of the things that move the rating up and move the rating down are things that we just discussed. Right. Moving the rating down would be, you know, uh, uh, not managing the budgets, deficit spending, or you know, all the things that uh, Lawrence's uh, mistakes that we may have made in the past. Uh, My question is tougher, though. My question is how much. 
How uh, much of, do you think before we start looking at tick upwards? They, so it would we save 2.5 versus They won't put a dollar five? point. They won't put a dollar amount on that. They're right. just, these are the, all things considered, uh, there's a many things that they consider in their ratings, but they, they do delineate what some of those are. You know, the, the management's uh, uh, performance, uh, you know, policies, procedures that we have in place. There's many factors that go into our rating, but one of them would be, uh, you know, what's the unreserved and undesignated fund balance of the community and, and is it is it going down or is it increasing? All right. All right. I'm fine. Thank you. All right, thank you. Are there any additional questions? Councillors, what's your your motion on this? Motion to approve. And, and send it with favor recommendation in order of public hearing. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. That's for document one ninety two A. And now, can I get a motion from 192B? Motion. So moved. Second. Motion, ha same motion, basically? Motion <laughs> has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Thank you. Um, document 187-14, Lawrence Municipal Airport, Wildlife Hazard Assessment and Grant Assurance, <clears throat> AIP Project Number 3. Um, we have Mr. Miller here. Good afternoon, counselors. Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, first of all, I want to apologize. I have a medical condition. That's why I'm wearing a ball cap. <clears throat> ball cap. It's not a slight on the authority of the council, so I just want them to know that. Um, thank you for hearing me. Uh, we at the airport have applied for and have received a grant from the Commonwealth to help fund a wildlife hazard assessment study. It's an AIP project, which means Airport Improvement Project, which is a federal project. And the federal government will pay about 90 percent, the state will pay 5 percent, and the airport will pay 5 percent from its revenue. As a condition of the grant, the airport is required to have grant assurances executed and returned back to the Commonwealth. So the grant um, assurances have been approved by the airport commission, and now they're down before the council for the city council's approval, and then they'll have to be executed by the mayor as well as the city council president. So I'm asking that the committee approve this so that we can move forward secure the money and continue along the lines with getting that assessment done. Councilors, are there any questions? What is the exact amount? Uh, sure, the, the, the total project is $96,630 and the 5% state grant is 6902 96000 For the total project cost. Yes. Uh, yeah, but can you say the, the, the full amount again? Uh, no, the full amount is 96630 Okay. I'll give you the federal breakdown. The federal percentage is 82826 The state percentage is 6902 Okay. And the local share <coughs> is 6902 So the, the state and the and the local will pay the same percentage. they are okay. it's the federal pays 90 percent and then the state and the local split the difference so it's five and five okay Councilors, have any questions I have one question so you have, a, you have a few of these in layman's terms just give me a why is this important and why are we doing it uh, federal government has determined that wildlife hazard assessment is important because you need to know what's going on around the airport in terms of mammals, fox, deer running on the runways or taxiways, as well as bird migration patterns throughout the airport area. So they'll be going along uh, not just the airport property, but the surrounding properties in Methuen, Lawrence, North Andover, and looking at possible hazards. The river, the sewage treatment facility, uh, facilities, industrial facilities that have dumpsters, wanting to make sure that they're not attracting to birds. Uh, Holt Road in North Andover has a lot of recycling. They'll go over there and make sure that they're complying with their state permits to make sure that it's not a bird attractant. They'll determine whether or not there is a hazard, and if there is a hazard, then they'll come up with some medi uh, mediation plans, and that will be then left to the airport to execute. That, as a result of that first initial study, if some of the remediation plans is that they need additional wildlife hazard fencing, the federal government will then put that on the AIP program, and then again will be similarly a 95, a 90%, 5%, 5% split to get money to fence in the airport to prevent deer, fox, or any other mammal from coming on. So that's that's why that one is important. Would you like me to go through the other projects as well? Let's stick to this one. I would recommend just going through and passing this one and then talking about the next one later. Mm -hmm. um, Councilors, any additional questions? When when do we have to pay that amount? Is, is that when the project is complete or? That's, that's not an emergency. That's going to be starting over the next year. 
Um, so that's fine. Um, we won't be paying it until we get invoiced. So um, over the next year, that'll be part of our funding for that. The local share will be in next year's budget. Um, Councillors, what's your motion? Motion to approve and uh, send it with favor recommendation and order public hearing. Um, Mr. Arnello, do we, we don't need a public hearing. Do we this. need a public hearing? No, we don't need no? a public hearing. Okay. This is just a grant approval, right, Mike? We don't yes, need Okay, we don't need So we just Second. need a, uh, uh, an order to uh, approve the expenditure approve of the, the grant funds. Okay. Yeah. We just want to be safe. Yeah. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You guys have it. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, document 189-14, Lawrence Municipal Airport Emergency Replacement of Snow Removal Equipment Grant. Um, Mr. Miller. Yes, this one's a little bit different from the one I just previously spoke of. This is actually under a state program. It's the ASMP, the Airport Safety and Maintenance Program. The split is 80-20, 80% state, 20% city. Uh, it's, it's an emergency now, but it was in January when I applied for this grant to replace our 1985 dump truck that we use as a plow truck. So the state has come up with the money to fund it. They issued the grant to us back in April. Uh, they again require these grant assurances. This money has to be spent before the end of June, this fiscal year. We fortunately have that line item, the local share, in our budget already. So I'm asking that the uh, committee approve the grant assurances and also I'll be making a request that this be declared an emergency so we don't have to wait the 30 days because as I indicated, this, this money has to be spent by June 30th of this fiscal year. And what is the dollar amount? I know that you the mentioned. The total dollar amount is $47,927. The state will be paying 38480 and we will be paying $9,447. Could you repeat the first amount, please? For I'm sorry? Can you repeat the first amount? Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Motorcycles. It's $47,927. Okay. And then again, it's an 80-20 split, so the state is 38480 and our share is 9447 Okay. Um, and you mentioned that it has to be spent before the end of the fiscal year. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Councilors, are there any additional questions on this? Uh, Mr. Chairman? I'm just wondering, um, through you. So our next full city council meeting that's not special is June the 2nd, I think. Um, third. June 3rd. Third, thank you, June 3rd. Uh, does that give you enough time? We actually have a special meeting that we've got scheduled for next Tuesday. If you have an extra week, does that make a difference to you at all? I don't think it will. Uh, the, we've already gone out to bid and there's a contract that's been executed. I believe the vendor is working towards it. Um, Lynn Tron from the Comptroller's office told me she just needs the approval from the council so that they can then open up the project and then we can get the money dumped into the project account. So if you approve it at your next regularly scheduled meeting, I think that should be sufficient. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Councilor, any additional <coughs> questions? What's your motion? Motion to send that up with a favorable recommendation. Second. Discussion, just real quick. So you're gonna buy new plows? It's, it's one one plow truck, it's a, it's a, a dump truck. It's a, it's like a heavy-duty Chevy pickup truck. So you got rid of the other one? Or you've got, what, what's your fleet made up of now? Uh, we still have two international uh, Sterling um, plows with the wings. We have a 1985 Oshkosh Snowblow. We have a 1999 John Deere. And this will replace our 1985 Chevy dump truck where we put the spreader on to spread salt in the driveways and also has a plow. Is that gone right now, the 85? No, it's in the garage. You just can't put anything on the bed because it's all rusted out. What are you going to do with that? It will be declared surplus and then whatever the city does with it. And so now you're going to have so three, three big pieces. Is that going to solve all your problems over there with snow removal? You had some serious issues before. Oh, we'd love to have another Oshkosh or something of that nature. We'll be fine with the equipment we have because we only have so many operators. It's like yeah. a Chinese fire drill during a snowstorm. We jump out of one piece into another. However, um, we'll be, this will be sufficient. This will replace an aged piece of equipment and it'll also allow us to, to better actually handle the snow. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Call the question. All right. There has been a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Um, I did skip one item. It's document 188-14, Lawrence Municipal Airport, runway 523, runway safety area. Uh, Mr. Miller. Yes, thank you, Council Chairman, uh, Committee Chairman. You've probably heard me talk ad nauseum about runway safety areas. This is a fund, uh, a grant to fund the 
permitting and design of the runway safety area for runway 523. Briefly, a safety area is an area of land at the end of the runway. It's not paved, it's not considered runway, but on this runway will be 300 feet long, 150 feet wide, mm -hmm. and it's required under current design standards by the FAA. In the event an aircraft loses an engine, blows a tire, or possibly hits a bird, um, they have an area that they can then roll off the edge of the runway and then continue on without damaging the aircraft or potentially loss of life. If you're familiar with the airport, you'll know that we only have 100 feet, and then it's a steep drop. If any of you have seen the reservoir, that's what it looks like, those hills coming down. That's what we have. So in order to bring it to compliance, we have to design it and permit it through the local and state permitting process, and then there'll be another grant for the construction of it. So this first grant is the first phase, and the total grant or the total project cost is $800,755. This is an AIP project, so again, it's federal, state, and local. The federal government's picking up 90% of it, and that cost of that grant is $720,679. And then the five and five is $40,038, and that reflects the state as well as the, the local share. That money will be over two years and it'll be contained in the airport's budget. Okay. Councilor, are there any questions? Councilor LaPlante. So what it sounds like you're, what we need to do there is that you need to have some fill to bring the, uh, mm. to bring the, the, the uh, off the runway back up to grade, right? Exactly it. And so if you get this straight, so we're spending almost a million dollars for yeah. fill. That sounds like an awful lot of money. It's, I wish it was as easy as just saying fill. Um, there are regulatory agencies that have three letters, such as DEP, and a much larger one called Conservation Commission. That's where the bulk oh, wetlands of wetlands over there? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're dealing with intermittent streams, some potential vernal pools. Uh, we're going to have to have a culvert, and we're going to have to determine whether or not the bugs and bunnies will be afraid to go through the dark or if it has to go around it. Hmm. So a lot, of, a lot of engineering and design is going to be going into that based upon Conservation Commission and DEP input. I wish it was as easy as just putting fill in. <laughs> I think a lot of people do. Any additional questions? Councilors, what's your motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Abstain. Okay, so roll call. Councilor LaPlante. Abstain. Councilor Aquino. Yes. Councilor Reyes. Yes. yes. Uh, myself is yes. Uh, the motion uh, passes. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Next document is uh, document 193-14, uh, fiscal year 2015 annual authorization of revolving funds, Bellevue Cemetery, uh, $85,000. Council on Aging, $100,000 recreation and park, self-supporting service, uh, Veteran Memorial Stadium. Mr. Anello. <coughs> These are, this is the um, um, annually we have to reauthor, the city council must reauthorize, the mayor must approve and the council must reauthor, must approve a reauthorization of, re, of the city's revolving funds. We have four revolving funds, um, the Bellevue Cemetery, the Council on Aging and Recreation and the Veterans Memorial Stadium. So this is the annual authorization to, uh, to authorize it for another fiscal year. Um, Mr. Anello, let me see. We have a dollar amount for two of the funds. Uh, the, the, uh, the financial orders for the Bellevue Cemetery were approving um, a, an amount up to 85,000 in expenditures. Um, again, if I could just hand out, I do have a little financial statement for each of the reserve funds so you can see sure. what was expended. Um, So in these statements, there's a uh, there's one for each fund. It just shows the uh, revenues and expenditures uh, uh, for the annually from 2009 through FY14 and through um, April 30th of, of this year. Um, and uh, so the first authorization uh, in front of you is the Bellevue Cemetery Fund, 
And if you look at the statement for Bellevue Cemetery Revolving Fund, you'll see that the uh, last year, or so far this year, we've only expended $10,501 out of that fund. So 85,000 uh, is not what we expect them to expend, but if they, they would be allowed to expend up to 85,000 um, in that Bellevue Cemetery Fund. Mm -hmm. The Council on Aging uh, has an authorization of, of, under, of 100,000. Uh, and the Council on Aging this year has spent 75,000, so 100,000 should, uh, they should not exceed 100,000. Or if they do, they'll have to come back to the Council for additional approval. And for the Recreation Revolving Fund, that statute's a little different, so it doesn't require a, a dollar amount. It's, you're authorizing the uh, ability to, uh, for the Recreation Division to charge, uh, charge fees and use those fees uh, for uh, expenditures uh, related to the self, uh, uh, self-serving fund. Uh, that's under Chapter 44, uh, uh, Chapter 53D. The other ones are Chapter 44, Section 53 and a half. And the last one is the Veterans Memorial Stadium, uh, and that, pull that out. Veterans Memorial Stadium has an annual authorization of 120,000. And last year, or so far this year, they spent uh, only 44,000. It seems like we are not making revenue here. And I think there's such a great potential at the Veterans Stadium. In, in the Veterans Stadium, uh, again, uh, I think they take in a lot of money towards the end of the year because that's when the stadium gets more active or summertime. Uh, so I'm not sure if they're going to make that up. But, uh, but if you look at the very last line, which is their ending fund balance, um, they've got 109,000 um, in fund balance to draw on if, they, uh, if there is a shortfall. They have, they have reserves from previous years. Mm -hmm. And that stays within the fund until the fund is no longer authorized. Councilor, is there any questions here? I do. Uh, Councilor Laplante. So just for one of these, I, I want to help, help me understand the Bellevue Cemetery Revolving Fund. Bellevue Cemetery, yep. For example. So, and we're going to talk about this. We can, I'm going to be talking about it a lot during the revenue section of the budget, so we can knock a little bit off now. I can save my time a little bit later, so. We, uh, so w when you, when, when someone dies, first of all, a lot is purchased, right? And then you might actually, there are other payments that you have to do as well. Maybe it's an intern, uh, intern cost potentially. You have to maybe buy a marker of some sort. All this money that goes into the cemetery, how much of that money goes back to the city? How much of that money remains in the cemetery? And how does this revolving fund deal with all those matters? Well, there's, there's a couple of, there's, uh, there's uh, and I'd have to defer to the cemetery, Tom Ferris would probably know uh, the, the superintendent of the cemetery, uh, but there are so, some of the funds that he collects, and I don't re recall what it is, some of it goes, some portion goes into the general fund, I don't know if it's 50% of the vault sales or, uh, I believe the lot sales come into the general fund, and perhaps the 50% of the vault sales go into the general fund and 50 stays in a revolving fund. But the revolving fund does have certain revenue sources that stay in the revolving fund. In addition to this fund, they also have a cemetery perpetual care trust fund. Uh, that's different. That was money left uh, by benefactors. And the, uh, um, the in income off that uh, trust fund subject to the cemetery board of trustees can be spent to support the Bellevue Cemetery. So the Bellevue Cemetery really has three sources of funding. They generally, they generally only use the perpetual care trust fund a couple of years ago, they bought a backhoe, I think, for 80000 and that's what they uh, took out of the cemetery uh, trust fund. The revolving fund pays for, you know, if I looked at the expenditures, uh, help with maintaining the lawns. They might have bought a piece of lawn equipment, uh, anything to help maintain the cemetery. Uh, but some of the revenues uh, from their operation do go into the cemetery revolving fund. And then, uh, as you suggested, I don't have the, oh, maybe I do have it here. Um, uh, what goes into the general fund. There is a, um, uh, I do have a, a statement. I'm not sure I can put my fingers on it that quick, but there is a, an amount uh, that comes into the general fund from uh, the cemetery revolving. So the cemetery, if you look at the revenue section, you have internments, you have sales of lots and graves, you have uh, burial permits. I think those are the three. 
Okay. Items of money that come into the cemetery. <coughs> And so some money goes into the, so the, so the city takes part of that money? Some goes into the general fund, uh, yes, okay. yeah, and, and some goes into the revolving fund. And then if a benefactor, and somebody must have left some money with the city years ago, because I think they have, uh, uh, I know it's more than a half a million, I think it's closer to a million dollars in assets. And we can, the interest and the income earned off those assets can be used to support the cemetery. So you we can't touch the corpus of the trust. We take money out of it, and then we we'll talk about the cemetery budget at some point, and then we're going to be we're going to be paying things from the general fund, paying <coughs> the cemetery workers, etc. Yes, yes, they have a general fund budget. Wouldn't it make sense to make that an enterprise-like fund? I don't think it's allowed by statute. Um, it's not a. Um, and I don't know if they would. I don't know if it could become self-supporting. Um, I'd have to look at that. I'm not, I'm not aware of a, a cemetery operation being um, an enterprise fund, uh, but it could be. Um, yeah, I don't know if there's enough, there aren't enough assets to, to fully support it. So I'm still, I'm sorry, I'm still confused by the, the revolving fund. So some of the money, I, I named three different pockets of money that come in. I named burial permits, we named uh, internments, we named. Uh, Thoughts of sale of lots and grapes, and you mentioned one, which is like benefactors kicking in some money, um, and that already has its own. That's trust funds, right? It's got its own trust fund. Right. So out of this money that's coming in from those three elements, w some of those are going to the revolving fund. Yeah, I mean, you know, the revolving fund it took in forty-one thousand four hundred eighty-two dollars worth of, of uh, you know, I don't know if it's. I imagine the burial. Maybe it's part of the burial permits. Maybe it's part of the interment. But I know there's a mix. Uh, and Tom Ferris can, can tell us what it is. Right. But I believe there's 50% goes to the general fund, 50% of something <coughs> goes into the revolving fund. I'm gonna do council uh, chair. I'm gonna save, I mean, I, I don't want, Mr. I know it's gonna be a master of almost every department and everything, and that's maybe a little unfair. So I'm gonna wait for Mr. Ferris to come and I'll I think we'll go into more detail on that. I think then. that will be the right approach. I'm sure he could explain it in good detail for you. Are there any additional questions in regards to this matter? Uh, one thing is the stadium, because that's in my district. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, it goes wildly. Purchase of services, 2009, 5,000. In 10, it was 11,000. 48, I'm sorry, in 11, it went to 48. Then it dropped to 32. Went back up in 13 to 41. It's all over the map. I think part of that is that, I, you know, my, my understanding is that we were hiring personnel. We were tucking away some people. Will that come under purchase services over there? No, that would be under personal services. I see it now. And that's going up wildly as well. In 11, it was 18,000. In 12, it was, it was double that to almost 46. And then we dropped it again uh, to 2013 to 23. Why is there such wild fluctuations? Uh, the, I, I, I'm not in charge of the Veterans Memorial Stadium, but I do know that uh, certain, uh, for each event that's <coughs> held there, DPW has to send a crew to open to be there during the event. Uh, and then close the gates, and uh, so are some personnel expenses. We also are in charge of repairing that uh, or maintaining the facility, so there could be, uh, John uh, Asenzi is in charge of public buildings, but if, since this uh, fund does have a revol some revolving funds, they might have used some, uh, some of this money to do some repairs without using uh, his general fund budget. Yeah, that's per but these are personal services, some of these are personal services. Items. Yeah, I don't. There aren't any employees over there, but there's. Uh, there there's, was. There are. Uh, oh, I, I believe there. There might be somebody assigned there, but I think they they're generally laborers, and yeah. I don't think they work there full time. Well, we were we, we tucked away people back uh, within the last two or three years into the into the stadium area. There were some jobs programs there, so to speak, where people were put there to work, um, and that might explain why there's forty five thousand dollars in two thousand twelve. Well, a laborer's position, uh, and I think you'll see in the budget, I don't, uh, that wouldn't be more than one laborer. They're, they're one you know, with, or, yeah, or about, about 40,000. Right, so the other monies were coming from the city side and then yeah. would offset the. I think over. generally it's overtime for uh, some DPW employees. Right. I tend to doubt that a little. I, 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 accept, <coughs> I accept that. I said that's an awful John lot of could tell you. But I will ask John. Yep. Thank you. 
additional questions? Nope. No questions. Councilor Russell, what's your motion? Motion to approve the Winita public hearing on this one? No. no. This no. is the this this order is an annual uh, vote. Um, we're not. It's not appropriating anything. It's just authorizing reauthor an annual reauthorization of the revolving funds, and and attached is the statute uh, order. Uh, statute uh, qu is quoted here. So. Second. No public hearing. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Our final document before we begin the hearings is document 194-14, Water and Sewer Department uh, request to pay fiscal year 2013, wow, invoice service of Nekumen Police Department on the amount of $1,397.25. Uh, Mr. Payne, who's here for the first time after he was appointed. I am, good evening. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Payne. Thank you. So before you tonight is a request to pay an invoice for services rendered in fiscal year 2013 by the Methuen Police Department in the amount of $1,397.25. And what we're seeking is um, the authorization to pay it out of the fiscal year 2014 budget. You mean 2014 or 2013? Uh, it's it's an uh, invoice dated for services rendered in 2013, but we're seeking um, authorization to pay it out of to the 2014. Out of this fiscal year. Out of this fiscal year, correct. correct. <coughs> Mr. Anello, it seems like we were built, you might not have the answer for this, but it seems like we were built uh, on time to make this payment. It's not a big amount. Do you know why we didn't do it? Uh, I, I haven't seen this invoice, but it's, but that's in FY14, <coughs> so you don't really need the council's approval. No, no. Paying it in FY14. Correct. But the services are rendered in FY13. So oh, okay. All right. But back. okay. Okay. So the service, I guess they're going by the service date, not the invoice date. Mm -hmm. But generally that would have been uh, been allowed. So somebody kicked it back and notice, noticed that the, uh, the service dates, I don't know what this is for. Oh, police details. The service dates were June 19th of 13. So that does require uh, council approval to expend. Uh, uh, expend a prior year invoice under current year funds. Councillors, have any questions on this matter? Just, just one question. That uh, was a Council police. Um, thank you. That was a for police detailing. Is that what you? Yes, these are for police details, traffic <coughs> control, uh, traffic control details at uh, construction sites. That is going to be for Metuan Police Department? Correct. So that is the part that I'm kind of loose. Why the police, why Metuan Police Department? Uh, if there's too much work for the, uh, too much detail work for Lawrence Police, they um, reach out to neighboring communities who may be interested. Um, so they might not have the bodies to fill the additional work. So Methuen has graciously volunteered to supply police officers. Something that I didn't know that that can happen, but. Yeah, we actually reach out to uh, other communities as well. Um, also the uh, Essex County Sheriff's Department. They can also fill details here in the city. And that oh. was only for one day? Uh, this is for two days. Two days, yep. okay. June 19th and 20th. Okay, so I have no more questions. Any additional questions? How, how often do we go, do we ask for police detail from other communities? Um, typically we reach out to the Lawrence Police Department. Lawrence Police is the uh, entity that arranges outside details and it depends on their staffing levels. All right. Okay. Um, counselors. Council, I would suspect that we're not gonna have that problem next year and we had a new 10 new police officers because the, 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 the need for more outside details will probably will, will be abated with new police officers who are probably looking to get more work. These officers, you keep in mind, we were running them ragged for a long time. We were short on cops. 
um, and they were working overtime and all these details, and they were working many, many like 60, 70, 80 hour weeks. Um, and, and it actually could have been a public safety problem, them working so many hours, and we had to go to a different community. But hopefully okay. that'll cease. All right. Councilors, what's your motion? Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillors, for purposes of um, video recording, and I know that I spoke to our wonderful uh, Bill, who's, who's uh, recording our, our videos, he said if we could take a, a, a short recess just to cut our current meeting, and then we could start the budget hearings as one different Motion to meeting. recess? Motion to recess has been made. Second. Motion has been made and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.